Of late here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, we've been doing a simple tutorial series on Pro Audio. We've spoken about two of the common plugs used, we've spoken about balanced leads, we've spoken about speakers, and we've spoken about, in three simple steps, the music production process. Well, for this video, we're actually going to talk about how music is recorded. Some of you out there may not really get a grasp of it or understand it completely. This video is for you, not the know-it-all experts of Backyard Tech. You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, continuing with our simple tutorial series on Pro Audio. And this one I want to go through the process of actually recording music to multi-track. Again, the know-it-all experts, Nick Off, you know this, you've done it, you've seen it, you know all about it, this isn't for you. All right, this is for those, as always with this simple tutorial series on Pro Audio, that want an understanding of it. Okay, recording music. There are various ways of doing it across two type or two or three types of recording medium. There's traditional analog mag tape, there's DTRS, digital tape recording, and then there's hard drive, which is the most common one to an extent today. Either which way, the actual process of getting music from the band to the device isn't any different. Okay? For this, we're going to look at you you can do you can apply this to hard drive. We're going to be talking about mag tape. Now, be that traditional two inch or DTRS. Okay? Same scenario applies to hard drive if necessary. I've done more mag tape recording than I've done hard drive recording, okay? When I was working as a recording engineer. So, uh, where do we start? Well, there's a couple of ways bands record their tracks. Now, I'm specifically talking about bands that use instruments, real stuff, not pop music and rap and hip hop and EDM. I'm talking about actual rock bands, some pop bands as well, and you can throw metal in there if you want to. Generally speaking, okay, I've done both types of recording. There's layering up off the bed tracks, and then there's recording the whole lot in one hit. And that's called a live recording. Now, We'll start out with live, actually, because that's probably the easiest one to get your head around. Live recording is where the whole band is in the studio as one unit. So everything goes to tape at once. Drums, guitars, keys, and vox. Now, vox is short for vocals, okay? So the whole lot gets laid down in one foul swoop, okay? So you may have a six-piece rock band, six, seven-piece metal band, five-piece pop band, piece meaning instruments, okay? So drums is one piece, bass is one piece, guitars are one piece, keys one piece, vox. And vox can be, I'm not saying it always is, but vox can be both lead and backing singers, okay? Lead vocals, backing vocals, take your pick. So a live recording is where everyone goes into the studio, the vocalist may go into a Vox booth, the band into the live space, it may be a reflective echo live space, which means you don't really need to use any outboard effects in the mix down, or it could be a um, sound dead room for whatever reason, okay? So everyone's in there. The vocalist may be in the room with the band, they may not. You know, the band might be in the live space and the, the, vocal, the lead vocalist could be in the, um, 
could be in the Vox booth, and then when they go to layer up the harmonies and the backing vocals later, we'll go into the live space as well. Various ways of doing it. Bands in the 70s and 80s and 90s did it that way, okay? Then there's the other way of recording, which is layering up the tracks. Now, what does that mean? Well, for example, Paul McCartney's done this, some other solo artists, solo artists who are multi-instrument capable, so they can play all the instruments. Paul McCartney did it. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. He's probably one of the most famous ones. Um, I think Sting's done it as well with some stuff. Um, very, some of the artists can play play the everything. You know, Dave Grohl can play everything. Um, you know, there's many, many solo artists out there that can play the everything. Okay? Dave Grohl used to do it when he first started off from Food Fighters after Nirvana. He would play the everything. He'd play, you know, he'd go into the studio, he'd lay down the drums, then he'd lay down the bass, then he'd lay down the vox, then he'd lay down the harmony. You know, that's layering up. So layering up is whereby you record, for example, the bed tracks, so drums and bass. That's bass guitar, not drum and bass, which is the EDM, right? You lay down drums and bass. They're your bed tracks. So that's your rhythm setup done, right? Then once that's laid down and, and everyone's happy, then you lay down the, all the guitars and the, and the keys and that, and you, so that those people have got a rhythm section to go along with. And then the last thing you do is lay down the vocals. Now, for example, um, you might have a, uh, a, a rock band that can't line up to get into the studio at the same time. Work commitments, family commitments, health problems, whatever. So the drummer and the bassist may be able to go in and lay down the bed tracks for uh, an EP, okay, extended play. So you go SP, EP, and album, okay? Or well, single, I should say. So single, EP, album, right? So the record label's gone, right, well, we'll get these three or four tracks out as an EP while we work on the rest of the album. But for various logistical reasons, the band can't get into the studio at exactly the same time. So the drummer and the bassist might go in, lay down the bed tracks for the EP. Day or so later, maybe the guitarists and the keyboarder can come in. They lay down their tracks. And then two or three days later, the vocalist has got to come in and the backing vocals have got to come in and the whole lot gets mixed in that way. Now that's the slower way of doing it, but it has been done many, many, many times. Huge amount of times. And in fact, in the early days of mag tape, that was the only way to do it. Lay down, get multiple track, multiple mag tape, lay the individual instruments down, then bring the whole lot together in one hit. Synchronize the tape machines and off you go. All right? In live recording, okay, so that's recording the whole lot in one hit, Right, there you are in front of a 32 channel desk. Okay, you might have what four eight track machines, so DTRS, so that's Alesis and okay. or you might have uh two inch 24 track um tape machine and an eight track or two 16 track uh mag tape machines synchronized. So that when you hit record, they both start at exactly the same time. It's very rare you would use all 24 channels, or very rare you'd use all 32 channels on a desk, but it can happen. I've used, personally, on a 32-channel mixing console, I've ended up using 28 tracks into a DTRS machine. Because we had to layer up some stuff. Um, we, whoops, sorry. We had to punch in some stuff as well. So I've actually used almost, tw well, no, hang on, 24. It was 28 channels on a 32-channel desk. I ended up having to use two stereo buses to layer up the track, okay? Sometimes you will find also a 32-channel console 
will actually be a 28 channel console with two stereo buses so four extra channels doesn't always happen but it can or you may find a mixing desk that is um, I know, 24 channels and four stereo buses giving you 32 channels depends so essentially the recording process is varied now recording to mag tape is no different than to recording to HDD or hard storage be it HDD SSD whatever the process of actually recording is exactly the same regardless of whether you're going to tape or hard drive it doesn't actually matter all right it's just that one is either a fully analog scenario so two inch 24 track or um, one inch 16 track right or one and a half inch 16 track whatever um, or you're going to DTRS which is you know Alesis or Tascam or you're going to hard drive doesn't matter so recording a band that's your process now if you flip the coin and go to some of the pop junk that's on radio these days a lot of it is actually made on a computer so you'll actually have a producer sitting there in either Cubase or Appleton or Rebirth or something like that and a MIDI controller keyboard and they're doing the bass, you know, they're doing the bass line, they're doing the drums, they're doing the rhythm, doing the guitar. The whole lot is done using samples. And they sit there and program the whole lot into a Apple Mac or a Windows PC or something. Then you get the vocalists come in, lay the vocals down. Job done. In fact, in some cases, you wouldn't even need a fully fledged mixing desk to do it. Now, back in the 80s, when we had, you know, Lindrum and Oberheim, Ober, Oberheim, Korg, Casio, Yamaha, obviously the DX7, uh, Moog or Mog or whatever you want to call them, you could actually use those to do all the instruments and you lay them down on separate tracks. So you'd be using a synthesizer or the Fairlight CMI, another classic example. You'd still be recording it to multi-track because you'd still have to layer up the tracks. But with computer, you don't actually have to do that because what you can do now, and I've seen this done, you get your Apple MacBook Pro or iMac or Mac Mini or, or Windows or what have you. You get your DAW, so your, your Cubase, your Appleton, whatever have you. You get a MIDI controller. You get all the instruments you want right depending on how many voices your midi system can handle you lay down each of the you know so you might have a track for the bass you'll on your your screen actually i'll show you better yet i'll show you i will bear with me and i'll bring up a simple daw setup for those who want to understand hang on a minute all right now for the purposes of this i want you to look at this in two different lights here okay i don't have I, i'm a steinberg person i prefer steinberg don't tell them that. Um, but I don't have Nuendo, which is Steinberg's multi-track digital recording suite. So I have Cubase, but you can look at this in the same light. Now, for some pop music, along with EDM, so electronic dance music, which is what it's called now, which I refuse to listen to because it sounds like junk when you compare it to old school house of the 80s and 90s. The way it's recorded nowadays... All right, and this is like a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, all right? With pop music, if you're recording it digitally, with, which is the way some things are done, everything is MIDI. So drums, bass, guitars, everything is MIDI, and then you use a MIDI controller, which looks like a, a keyboard, you know, a piano-type keyboard, and that's how you activate the everything. You EQ it, you, you change how each of the voices sound, the MIDI voices sound, uh, we'll get into MIDI in a later video. Um, and you do it all like that. All right. And then you might insert, say, a uh, add a track. And you might add audio or you'll hit record and record something in. Okay. So that's MIDI. Now, if you take this as a multi-track recorder on a, in, in another light, okay, 
So forget the fact it says MIDI. I want you to think of this saying input or channel. So here we have 16 channels, 16 mono channels. Okay. So you might have kick drum, hi-hat, snare, toms, sorry, kick drum, hi-hat, snare, couple of toms, bass, two overheads, guitar, keys, harmony guitar, and then two or three channels of vocals. All right? And that's how you record into a multi-track DAW. Okay? In some studios, that's exactly how it's done with Pro Tools. Multi-channels into the computer, job done. Okay? And you'd use, be using something like either a um, multi-track, uh, a multi-channel system through FireWire or something like that, or optical, or what have you, okay? And that's how it's recorded digitally. Now, when I say recorded digitally, I don't mean... Um, you're still running an analog signal from the microphones and the instrument inputs into the desk. And the desk, or you may have, which I have seen, is a multi-core to digital converter where all the inputs from the live space and the vocal booth are converted to digital, sent into the desk after the digital converter. So by the time the signal gets into the desk, it's in full digital mode. Now, if this was a digital multi-track recorder, your meters are zero dB FS. If you were running this in an analog realm, then you would have a dB VU. Okay. And so the way this is all done is in multi-track. Now, if you listen to some of the pop garbage that's out there today, a lot of it is produced in a MIDI sequencer. And so what you're listening to on the radio in some cases is MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And when that artist goes on tour, sometimes they'll take real instruments with them and use session musicians, for want of a better term. And when you read, you know, the details of each track, you'll often find a programmer, such and such. They've programmed the track, which means they've gone into a MIDI sequencer or something and made the track using MIDI type instruments. Drum machines, synths, what have you. All right. So essentially, that is how things are recorded in... I'm just getting out of Cubase here a minute, guys. There we go. That's how things are recorded, all right? So there's various ways of recording to mag tape. And as I said, mag tape can be traditional magnetic analog along with DTRS, which is Alesis and Tascam and um, uh, um, um, Sony and stuff like that, okay? DAT, basically, digital audio tape, all right? Admittedly, that's only a two track, but it can be a four track if you wanted to. So that's how things are made, all right? And that's the recording process. So you either record the whole lot live, and that's everyone in the recording studio, and then either, um, Everyone records in the live space or the bands in the live space, which is normally a big room. And then off the side, there'll be a vocal booth. One thing I forgot to mention, okay? Sometimes, and it doesn't always happen, but sometimes, okay, you'll often see a band, and it's happened to me, okay? They'll be listening to the track and then the bassist or the guitarist goes, I want to add something. I want to add something on that from there. Okay? I want to add something. And what sometimes they'll do is using the insert function on a desk, plug the bassist into a patch 
bay and bring him in on an insert. Doesn't always happen, but it, it has happened and I've done it. Okay, so th this was back when I was doing DTRS and mag tape stuff. All right, I haven't done a lot of I haven't done a lot of DAW multi track. What I've done of multi track has either been mag tape, traditional analog, or DTRS. I've only Oh, that's a good question. How many times have I recorded to hard drives? Yeah, I know. You can see the mouse running around in my head. I think... Once or twice. I've only ever recorded... Once. Once to Pro Tools as a hard drive. That's it. The rest of it has all... Oh, no, sorry. No. Three times. Three times I've recorded to Pro Tools. Once was a full band, and the other two times were DJs, which were... Um, the two DJs were dual deck systems, so both turntable and CDJ. And for that, I used eight tracks because they all had to be in stereo. So um, turntable one was track. I'm trying to remember now. The band I recorded onto Pro Tools was, I think I used about 16 channels. And the two DJs that I've recorded to hard drive with Pro Tools, I've used eight. And I think it was channel one was left, or was odd and even. So um, the turntables were channel one and two. Well, turntable one was one and two. CDJ was three and four. CDJ was five and six. Turntable was... No, that's... No. No, no, no. I can't actually... Yes, I do actually, because the mixing desk... That's right, the four-channel mixer had um, pass-through line out, which means I had to go into a DI. So, essentially, I, w I wasn't use. I was using the, line, the individual lines out from the DJ mixer to go into the desk. And... Um, they were deck DJs making mixes and, and, and stuff like that for demoing. So, I yeah, I've only recorded the hard drive three times in my career. The rest of it has always been to mag tape. So I've done both multi-track 2-inch on both MCI. I've used an MCI and I've also recorded to a Studer, uh, which is Revox. Ah, uh, same company. We know that. And if you don't know that, then you're not a know-it-all expert because the know-it-all experts will know that Studer and Revox are the one company. Uh, Revox was making cassette decks. Studer was making multi-tracks, basically, although Revox did make a few multi-tracks. MCI I've recorded two, which was early MCI 2-inch. And the rest of the recordings that I've done have been to DTRS. More releases than Tascam. So there we go. So that's the recording process, guys. There's two ways of doing it. There's all in one hit, so recorded live, and then there's multi-track layering up where you layer up the, the piece of music. So you start with drums and bass, then your guitars, then your keys or guitars and keys, then your vox, then your harmony vox, backing vox, so on and so forth, up the channels. All right. Just as a bit of history... All right. The way it was done in the very early days was everything that you'd have a couple of tape machines and you'd have to constantly mix everything down so that you ended up with vocals. Because for a long time, we didn't have enough mag, enough magnetic strips on tape to do more than about two or th two or four channel, four channels of audio. So you'd be constantly mixing down and mixing and mixing and mixing until you had enough room in the track to add the vocals over the top. Funnily enough, that's how it was done in the very early days.
So there we go. The record, the actual recording process. Stick around, more coming up. Have a good one.